In this video, I'd like to talk about the trig values of these three special angles, pi over six radians, pi over four radians, and pi over three radians. And specifically, we wanna look at what happens when we plug these angles into the sine, the cosine, and the tangent functions. Since these are angles that show up quite frequently, and these angles simplify to triangles that we've studied before in geometry. These are gonna be the special right triangles. But before we look at these triangles in radians, let's first convert these to degrees so that we can develop an intuition between the two. And let me just make a little bit of room. And we know that the relationship between degrees and radians is that if we go all the way around the circle, 360 degrees, that this is equal to two pi radians. So when we have pi over six, what we can do is essentially divide each side of this equation by 12, so that on the right-hand side, we get pi over six, and let me do this in a different color. We get pi over six radians on the right-hand side, and on the left-hand side, this would be equal to 30 degrees. Likewise, if we started this process and divide by six, then we would get pi over three radians. We are dividing each side by six now, and 360 divided by six would be a 60 degree angle. And lastly, if we start with our ratio again, 360 over two pi radians is one, or as an equation, 360 is two pi radians, then we can divide each side of the equation by eight so that we get a 45 degree angle on the left and pi over four radians on the right. So these special angles are the 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. And we can start with this triangle right here. We have a pi over six angle for theta, and this is a right triangle. So this is our 30 degree angle. And if this is 30, that means this right here is 60 but we also know 60 is pi over three radians. So this is a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, which is a special right triangle. And remember that a 30, 60, 90 triangle is really just half of an equilateral triangle. So if we called this side R, then this short side here, which is half, of the side of an equilateral triangle, this would be r over two. Let me just clear that up. So if this is r, this is half r. And at this point, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out this side, or you can remember the pattern that to find the middle side, the one across from 60 degrees, you take the small side and you multiply it by the square root of three so that this side is just root three over two times pi r, whatever the hypotenuse of our right triangle is. And at this point, we can apply our trig definitions to this, and we can use our right triangle definitions of so Katoa. And let's say we wanna look at the sine of pi over six to start. And we know sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and the opposite to the pi over six angle, this 30 degree angle, is r divided by two, and the hypotenuse is r. If we simplify this, the r in the numerator and denominator will cancel, and we will just get one half. Or you can think about it that we are dividing by a fraction, so you can set it up as multiplication, since when you divide by a fraction, it's the same as multiplying by that fraction flipped over. The r's cancel, and we get one half. And likewise, we can look at the cosine of pi over six, and that would be the adjacent, this root three over two times r, all divided by r. Notice the r's cancel out again, and we get root three over two. But in this triangle, we also have the 60 degree angle, so we can analyze that as well we can look at the sine of the pi over three radian angle or 60 degree angle. And sine we know is the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse and the opposite of this angle is 
root 3 over 2 multiplied by r, and we're dividing by the hypotenuse, and we get the square root of 3 over 2, which notice is the same as the cosine of pi over 6. And lastly, if we do the cosine of pi over 3, we look at the adjacent side to the 60 degree angle, this pi over 3 radian angle, which is r over 2, and we will divide all of that. If I make a little bit of room, I can do this a bit neater. We divide all of that by the hypotenuse, which is r, and we saw above that that simplifies to 1 half. And if we want, we can even look at the tangent function, since the tangent of these angles, we'll do pi over 6 first, is the opposite over the adjacent. The opposite of the pi over 6 angle is r over 2. The adjacent is root 3 over 2 times pi r. The r's will cancel, and we have 1 half up top, and we multiply by this fraction flipped to over root 3, and we get 1 over root 3, and let me make a little bit of room here so we can keep working. If we rationalize this denominator, we can multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3 so that we get root 3 over 3. And likewise, we can find the tangent of pi over 3. We look at the side opposite, the pi over 3 radian angle, this 60 degree angle, that is root 3 over 2 multiplied by r, and we divide by the adjacent side, which is r over 2. It's essentially this, but flipped over. The r's cancel out again. We get root 3 over 2, but now we are dividing by half, which is the same as multiplying by 2 over 1, and this would just simplify to the square root of 3. So in conclusion, the trig values of the pi over 3 and pi over 6 angles simply come out of this 30, 60, 90 right triangle and the patterns that we can notice from that.